And for more on the volatile situation, I'm joined now by Peter Pham. He's the director of the Atlantic Council's Africa Centre. So, Peter, tonight we have this situation where President Nkurunziza is back in Burundi and he says he is going to run for this controversial third term in office. So what happens? Well, I think this is where uh, legalism meets political reality. Uh, the president obtained a ruling from the country's Supreme Court, although some of the judges have alleged coercion uh, in that ruling, that seems, uh, that he is entitled to run for a third term because the first term he was not elected by the people but by an electoral assembly. However, quite clearly there's a very strong resentment against this for violating the spirit, if not necessarily the letter of the Arusha Accords, which brought an end to the terrible civil war in Burundi. And so we're facing a situation where not only is Burundi at odds with itself, but over 100,000 refugees have spilled over the borders. This is risking the stability of an entire region, a region that's already pretty fragile. And do you expect then that the protests are going to continue against the president? Well, I think they're going to continue because uh, the sentiment on the street, we saw it in the celebrations of the failed coup attempt, really do not want him on the, uh, to continue with a, this project of a third term. And if not, one's not sure, and even the leaders of the regional East Africa community have raised the specter that elections really can't be held in this type of a climate at all. Well, what will East African leaders actually do? I mean, they met in Tanzania this week. Do they have any sway? Well, I think they do, because Burundi is one of the poorest countries in the world. Uh, in a neighborhood, the East African community, which is in growing increasingly prosperous, Burundi is the laggard. Last year, Burundi was rated the hungriest country in the world. Some uh, two-thirds or three-quarters of the budget is dependent upon foreign assistance. So there's, there's a great deal of leverage. I know from being in neighboring Rwanda what a spectre the 1994 genocide casts over both Rwanda and Burundi, which it affected too. So do you worry about that spectre once more of ethnic tension if there is political instability? If there's a silver lining on these clouds over Burundi at all, it's been that this is a political dispute. There are Hutus and Tutsis on both sides of the divide. And so it's not an ethnic conflict. It's a political one, which gives me hope that there's a way to resolve it politically without degenerating into the ethnic bloodbaths of the past. Well, what do you think that way could be of resolving it politically? What could the president elegantly do, having returned well, after this failed coup? Well, uh, actually, one of his predecessors, President Pierre Buyoya, shows that there is life in, in Burundi after the presidency. Buyoya has led numerous high-level international commissions, high groups, and he's had found a quite a satisfactory life after the presidency. And certainly, Enkidu Raziza has had his moments and there have been some progress made. Tax collection is up. Things have been developed. So there is a future. I think someone needs to offer him that golden parachute. Peter Pham, thank you very much indeed for joining us. Thank you for having me.